Hello everybody, this is Jeff Olson with Danfoss Drives. Today I have a short video for you that will demonstrate two different methods that a user can use to monitor the connected I.O. on a Danfoss VLT drive. The first method is by means of the local control panel or keypad. And alternatively, I'll show you how to accomplish the same thing using our Danfoss MCT10 setup software. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. Okay, so let's get started by taking a look at how to use the keypad to monitor these values. I have a drive sitting here next to me that's connected to an I.O. simulator box so I can simulate the I.O. I'm displaying the screen of that drive for you here. We're going to start out by going into main menu group 16, data readouts. From there, I'll scroll down to 16-6, Inputs and Outputs, and we see parameter 1660. This is going to show a binary string that represents the status of each of the digital inputs on the drive, and they are laid out according to the illustration here. So digital input 33 will be to the far right and 18 to the left. I'm going to go ahead and manipulate these inputs now, and we'll see that they will change states which represents that the drive is actually seeing those signals. So we'll start out with 33 and we see it change to a 1 so that one is activated and working correctly. 32, 29, 27, 19 and finally digital input 18. So we see there that those all change states. Now we can scroll down and look at analog values so parameter 1662 will show the raw voltage signal on analog input 53 could be voltage or current depending on what type of signal is connected going to move down to 1664 that will represent analog input 54 and it's a similar screen so i can see the voltage here on 54 this is showing me the analog output current that is being sent out of analog output 42 of course, the value there is going to depend on how the drive is programmed. 1666 would show me the status of any digital outputs if I had them programmed on the, on the drive. We can also see some pulse inputs and outputs as well as the status of the drive's relays. Now let's move over and take a look at how to do this using MCT10. So I have that same drive here connected through USB. I'm going to go into my main menu group 16, data readouts, and then 16-6, inputs and outputs. Here we can see all the same values that we just saw on the keypad on MCT10 in real time. So again, I can change the status of these inputs and we see that they'll change, and also the analog signals. One last way that we can view these signals is to use MCT10 and current versions have this icon here that shows status. If we go down to that icon, it's going to open up a window here and we can look at the digital inputs, digital outputs, relays, etc. So let's go to the inputs. And the nice thing about this is if the input is activated, it's actually called out and it lights up green. So I will deactivate these inputs and we'll see that it responds. So that's how we use the keypad or MCT10 to monitor the connected I.O. Thanks for watching. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Danfoss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-888. 326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. 
For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.